Hey guys, it's Tom Bucks. Thanks for tuning into MST.TV and got a ruling segment for you guys today. And we're gonna be tackling the most common slash frequent misplays slash illegal plays that are happening right now in the TCG of August 2019. I've caught these plays at multiple locals already, so I'm guessing it's frequent enough for me to talk about it. And a lot of these cards were introduced in Rocket Revolt. People are just aren't reading the cards. You know, a lot of people have the read enough of the text syndrome to give yourself an advantage, and then they basically redact the rest of it like Bonesy and none of us wants to get screwed over by a Bonesy, so we're going to dive deep into this one so that everyone plays fair, make sure that everyone's maintaining their game state. So if you guys are gonna enjoy this, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and ding the notification bell to stay up to date with the latest and greatest. I've actually got a side deck series coming up, apparently. Also, if you wanna help support this channel, check out the Patreon link down in the description below. Any type of subscription helps out and um, keeps this channel running strong. Now let's dive into this one so no one gets cheated. Okay, the very first card we're gonna look into is Rocket Tracer. What's the most common misplay slash illegal play coming from this card? I would say it's people not remembering that they are locked into dark monsters. I've seen this happen multiple times and uh, these are just really easy procedural errors that you can prevent and it reveals like unnecessary things for your opponent as well because you show them like a card that you can't summon and it just reveals like an extra card in your extra deck. But that's all. But looking into this one, what is it that makes it so important? So we're gonna read into the card text quick effect you can target one face of card you control destroy it and if you do that is your conjunction uh, special summon one rocket monster from your deck except rocket tracer now there's also that's also conjunction so even if you don't do the first part somehow you just can't do it anymore uh, but this part still resolves you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except dark monsters and you can only use this effect of rocket tracer once per turn so it's hard once per turn and it does lock you into dark extra deck monsters. It doesn't screw you over from your graveyard summoning else, yeah, Tempest or anything because it's wind. That doesn't matter. But what really does matter is your extra deck summoning. So what are the most frequent summons coming from this? We have Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. That is one of the more frequent ones because they couldn't really go into anything. They decided to bring out a second dragon and go into Heretic Seal just so that they can do an additional play, one additional disruption against their opponent. But that is not a legal play. You can't even go into Cyframe Lord Lambda to start your combo. I get that you want to start your combo and go into the Guard Dragons because the Guard Dragons are dark. You can still make the full board and uh, you can still go into the Hot Red because that's also dark. Uh, but you can't really start your combo like that. But if you do want to try to start your combo, rather than running Lambda, you can consider running Beat Cop. Because if you have Beat Cop and you have additional quick launches, you can still do the combo as is, but you will not be able to finish with the Heretic Seal of Heavenly Sears. As for other monsters that people have tried to go into, they try to go into Romulus, uh, the Dragoonity Knight. That one will allow them to fetch a Dragon Ravine and try to combo off from there. Yeah, can't do that. Remember, you're locked under dark extra deck monsters, so that is not a possibility for you as well now in terms of the last monster that i've seen people go into because they wanted the extra body they try to go into appalooza they got both the goddess yeah that one also not allowed because that is a wind monster as nice as you want to do it that's why everyone always finishes their large combo with Rocket Tracer. I'm not sure how relevant this is gonna be for the long run because people are gonna start running Nibiru once the Gold Sarcophagus tin comes out. And well, when that comes out, make sure you, that you don't over combo your deck so that you just play with traps and whatever. Anyways, that's outside of this ruling video. And that is something to keep in mind for Rocket Tracer. Now we're gonna move on to the next card. Our next misplay is coming from Destrudo. So what's wrong with this card? This card has been out for some time now, but with the release of Tempest and with the release of, oh, well, I guess people are playing more Red Eyes Darkness Metal, there's been a misplay going on with this particular card. So if you have Distrudo, the Lost Dragon for Son, if you use this effect to summon itself out, remember it goes to the bottom of the deck if it ever has to leave the field. Now the first, illegal play that's coming from this card is Red Eyes Darkness Metal. People summon this card out and they try to use it for material or the summoning condition of the Red Eyes Darkness Metal. But that's not possible. Red Eyes Darkness Metal needs to banish the card. If the summon condition is not fulfilled, you will not be able to summon out the Red Eyes Darkness Metal. So you can't just banish the card because if it's supposed to leave the field, it goes back into the bottom of the deck and therefore the summoning condition cannot be fulfilled by Destrudo. So that's number one. One frequent misplay slash illegal play that extended from uh, Tempest coming back is that people have been using Tempest as a target for Destrudo. So that's number two. 
And let me tell you, because a lot of people make the assumption that Destrudel needs to target a monster with a level. That is correct, but that's not entirely correct because it's still missing the level 6 or lower part. So reading Destrudel right now, it states that if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can pay half your life points, then target a level 6 or lower monster you control. Special summon out this card, and if you do, this card's level is reduced by... Uh, the level of the targeted monster. Also place this card in the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. So with that in mind, you can't target a 7 because you can't really reduce this monster's level to 0. Yeah, there's that, but overall it's mainly because you can't target anything that is above level 6. That is why. And Tempest is level 7, so if you do the math, you just can't do it. That's all. And uh, people have been using this as an extension because they got hand trapped by Ash, they got hand trapped by an ogre, and all of a sudden they needed another like dragon body to go into the guard dragon combo, and they do that with a tempest, and it just really shouldn't fly. So just keep that in mind, making sure that no one's illegally activating Destrudo and just extending it to a combo where they make that unbreakable board, and you just are sitting there dealing with it without realizing that the whole play shouldn't have even happened in the first place. So yeah, just make sure you guys catch that at YCS Portland so that you don't get screwed over by a board that shouldn't even have existed to begin with and it'll be too late by the time you sign that slip. Okay, side note here, I'm just gonna answer a couple of comments that were addressed in a couple of my videos. Red Eyes Darkness Metal and Guard Dragons. So for Red Eyes Darkness Metal, it contains the old once per turn clause, which is once per turn per face up copy. What does that mean? So if the monster goes face down and then goes back to face up on the same turn, you can activate it again. If it leaves the field and then comes back, it can activate again because the name of the card is not locked in. The hard once per turn usually contains the name in the, this card's effect can only be activated once per turn. So yeah, that answers the Red Eyes Darkness Metal. As for the Guard Dragon part, the effect that locks people into only summoning out uh, dragon monsters, that's a continuous effect. So the moment that the Guard Dragons leave the field, you're no longer locked into summoning out dragons anymore, which is why I can go into the Appalooza in my previous video in the combo. All right, so let's get that one out of the door and let's move on. Next one, Trishula, the Dragon of Icy Imprisonment. The most common misplay that I've seen people do with this card is they use Super Poly with your opponent's monster. Yeah, oh my god, this card has three different names. Wow, so easy. Yeah, that's not the case. It's actually pretty difficult because you can't do that. That's an illegal play. As Trishula has a summoning condition stated on the very first line. This first line states, must first either be fusion summoned using monsters in your hand and or field. So it has to be uh, in your hand or and or your field. Man, that was a bit of a mouthful there. Or a special summon from your extra deck by banishing monsters uh, you control. So either way. But yeah, you cannot use Super Poly. If you try to use Super Poly, you can, but it, all the monsters has to be on your own side of the field. And you can't use Dragon's Mirror, because if you try to use Dragon's Mirror, uh, the material, they're technically not in your hand and they're not in your field. So yeah, if you can Dragon's Mirror, you have to use only monsters that you control and basically banish them out from your field and summon it out. So yeah, you can technically use them, but you'll never be able to use the benefits of using your graveyard for Dragon's Mirror, and you won't be able to use the benefit of your opponent's monster to go into this card either. So yeah, that is the limitation for Trishula. Okay, that one's out of the door. Okay, finally, we're gonna finish off with Topologic Zero Boros. Yes, there is a slight difference between the TCG and OCG translation, according to a lot of you guys out there. So according to you guys, the difference is that uh, once per turn during the standby phase of your next turn after this card has been banished by its own effect and special summon this banished card versus uh, once per turn during the standby phase of the next turn. So the difference is the timing. And one, you get basically you summon it much quicker, you summon it during your opponent's turn, whereas the current TCG copy does not. And you'll have to wait for a reprint or an errata. Uh, basically issued into the database before we can actually play it that way. For now, this is the TCG way of playing. This is the only copy, and that's exactly how it's going to be played until uh, said otherwise. All right, so yeah, consider it as a significant nerf towards the card.
Yeah, that's all I can really say about that. What about the arrow thing? So, uh, according to the card text, you cannot summon or set monsters to any extra monster zone this card points to. Although the whole set monsters in the extra monster zone sounds kind of weird because it doesn't even sound like it's a possibility. Uh, Against 200 attack for each banished card, that's a continuous effect. And then there's the triggers. If another monster is special summoned to a zone a link monster points to while this card is face up on the field, banish all cards on the field. Okay. So, regarding the pointers, only you, the controller of the card, cannot special summon to the extra monster zone that this card points to. So, if you have this card dead in the center of your uh, of your field, and it points to both extra monster zones, well, it just means that you, the controller, cannot summon out from the extra deck anymore. You're just kind of locked out, really. And, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a lockout for yourself. But it's okay, because your opponent can summon, and everything can basically get banished regardless. So, yeah, so your opponent isn't locked out, and don't ever say that your opponent is locked out from summoning. But what about your own zones? What if this card is in the extra monster zone pointing from the two sides of your opponent and the two sides to yourself? Well, you can summon to those zones. Those zones are not extra monster zones, so you are still allowed to summon into those zones, and you can use a quick effect summoning to kind of trigger this effect to wipe the entire board during your opponent's turn or whatever. That's basically how this card works. So, yeah. Just keep in mind, it's only you, the controller, that is locked out from summoning into the extra monster zone if this card points to those particular zones. Okay, well, that's basically it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, learned something, caught on to something, just you know, put a reminder in your head so that your opponent does not neglect various game states that they need to keep track of, such as not summoning uh, non-dark monsters if they use rockets and stuff like that. Hit that like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe, ding the notification bell, and uh, yeah, stay up to date. And if you guys want to help support this channel, check out the Patreon link down in the description below. I appreciate all your support, guys, and keeping this channel running strong. I'm going to be looking at a lot more rulings because I... Apparently, I've got uh, gotten selected to uh, go to uh, YCS Niagara as a judge, like like last year. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys there. But if I am judging, wait till after hours before you guys try to uh, socialize with me. All right, guys. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. So don't forget to hold on to MST.TV.